Yo, what is good, YouTube? It's your boy Des Reacts back with another video that's been highly requested by my uh, Australian subscribers, man. And this is what is AFL Australian Football Rules Explained, updated 2022. And you know, I don't know much about this sport. I don't know the rules of it. I just know that this sport is freaking crazy, and you guys are psychopaths. But it is freaking awesome to watch, man. Those hits I reacted to. Uh, links gonna be in the bio to that video, but man, that was some of the most insane sport I've ever seen in my life. So, without further ado, man, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave, please leave a comment on what else you guys want me to react to. And thank you guys so much for getting me to 1600 subscribers, almost to the goal of 2000, which I hope to get by September 15th. Man, you guys gave me over 200 subs overnight yesterday. You guys are freaking amazing, and without further ado, man, let's get it. A game in which players soar like eagles. Where a player can run between 12 and 20 kilometers a game. A game that's fast-paced and brutal. How much is 10, 12 kilometers in uh, miles, if you guys know? A game that says the meek may inherit the earth, but they will never win games of football. This is AFL. For me, this is the greatest sport in the world. So let's look at the greatest competition of them all, the AFL. You would allude to it as the Australian version of the English Premier League, the NBA, the NFL. That is a... That stadium is huge. Well... It's the most watched competition by far in Australia, and it's the fourth most attended sport in the world. The AFL itself is contested by 18 sides that are all steeped in wonderful history and fabulous rivalries. The game itself is played between 18 players on the, on the field of play at any one time, with an interchange bench of four players that can be switched over 90 times. They play over four 20-minute quarters with time added on, and all the players line up in a certain formation. Ooh. So to go through it, you've got your full forward line um, that are comprised of two forward pockets and a full forward. These guys genuinely there are to attack the goal and trap the ball in the goal area. You may hear the terms pressure forwards. You may hear the terms crumbs if you watch the game. These guys are your strikers of the league, in your foot, to use a soccer analogy. Then you've got your half forwards. These guys are there to set up scoring shots, to attack the goal as well, and are also charged with forward pressure and locking the ball in that area. And they will be very similar, I would say, to an attacking winger in the soccer. Kind of, you know, like your Cristiano Ronaldo when he was a United player. Very adventurous, marauding forward type player. Then you have your centre line players. Now, these guys are the ones who recover the ball from the back line, mm. look to set up shots, get the ball forward. They predominantly run two ways. Kind of, they're made up as well with the two guys on the outside there, your wingers. They're kind of very rehearsed in defensive and forward. Kind of like a wing back would probably be the best way to describe them. They're not quite an attacking winger because they do a lot more defensive jobs in the modern day. See, this is already confusing me. Like, just the setup, I've never seen anything like it in any sport that Americans play. But, like, yeah, this is complicated let me know in the comments man how long did it take you guys to master this sport or it's probably just pretty easy because you guys grew up with it just like american football is probably confusing to some of you guys but i just know when i watch the highlights or the hits it just looks like complete chaos but i know these dudes are all very good at their freaking jobs and their positions so it makes this you know in my head it makes it a whole lot more organized for me hey yeah, foul but the, probably the most important part of the game. Then you've got your half back line. Now they're the, to recover the ball from the back line and to clear the ball to midfield and to the forward line. These guys genuinely are very quick. The smaller players on the flanks, the half back flanks, and you have a term you hear a lot: key defense. And this is just one team they're showing, right? This isn't both teams. Defenders and key forwards. These usually the players that are in the center of the half back line and the center of the full back line, who again, their job is to be a defender, to really lock down, get the ball out of the defensive 50, and to spoil all marks. And you can see that here, this is the format, you can kind of evenly spread. And then you've got these interesting ones here, they're called followers. Now this is quite confusing for someone new to the game, 
but they're comprised of a ruckman and two on bowlers. So a traditional name is the Ruck Rover and the Rover. So the generally these guys you'll see at the stoppages. So when the game gets stopped at centre bounds particularly, you'll see these guys around the centre, usually comprising of one really tall guy and two smaller players. And these guys are genuinely there to get the ball out of congestion. They're mm. real tough. They go in and get the ball. These guys usually genuinely are the strong, hard men of the competition. So those are the enforcers. Those are the people that are going to get you the ball. Like, those are the ones throwing themselves at each other right there. And Psychos. Really the exciting players to watch. They play on a ground that dwarfs a standard soccer field in really all the known fields that they play sport, particularly the American Dang. ones. Like we say, they cover up to 20 kilometers per game, the average midfielder does in the AFL. And the game premise is to... How much is 20 kilometers and miles? Let me know in the comments. Move the ball from one end to the other. Oh. And there is three predominant ways to do that. One is the handball, where the player uses their fist to reject the ball to teammates. It's a very unusual style. You may oh, see a... something oh. similar in Gaelic football if you are akin to watching that. But it is very predominantly to the AFL. The other more obvious method is the kick. Wait, why do they hit it? Why don't they just throw it? Are you not allowed to just throw it? Kick, and that's where they can gain up to 50 meters at a time, aiming to try and hit Dang. a player up to get a mark, or they do kick to space and allow players to run on. And the final way to move, and it's something that you see a lot more in modern day IFL, very similar to the basketball, they have to run with the ball at hand, but must bounce it once every 15 meters. There isn't a limit to how much they could do that. You could run one end to the ground to the other if you do that. Very rare, though, because the game doesn't allow much space. Okay, that makes more sense now. So you have to dribble it every 15 meters. That's crazy, man. I bet you sometimes when they dribble it, the ball just, like, bounces all over the place. Maybe not with the professionals, but definitely probably with the kids or high schoolers or college players. Let me know. And when we're kicking, we're looking for these marks. Now, it's one of the most spectacular Ooh. aspects of the AFL. And it's something that you don't see really in any other sport as exciting as this. And it's mm. a game that allows you to use the opposition as a stepladder. The ball must travel 50 oh. metres without anyone touching it prior to the player marking That's the crazy. ball. And it can't hit the ground. And if you do that successfully, we call it a paid mark. And that's where a player gets effectively a free kick from wherever oh, he is okay. on the ground with a 10 meter protection area. So if he jumps up on their shoulders and catches it in the air, he, he gets a free kick. That's a dope. Yeah, to play his next kick. Perhaps the most common mark you'll see, and the biggest aim is to mark inside 50. Now you'll notice oh, on the field hit the as pole. it comes up now, there's these little red lines indicating where the 50 are, these semicircular arcs. If a player successfully takes a mark inside 50, they get 30 seconds to attempt to score a goal. And the object of the goal is to kick through the mm. two middle posts. If you do that, you'll get six points. If you hit the post or you get it through the other posts or a player takes it of the opposition and runs it through the behind, oh. runs it through the goal, there's no own goals in this game. It's a single point, resulting in the opposition getting the ball and there will be a restart from that goal square there in the defensive 50. The game starts... Okay, so all the polls have different point systems. Okay is a really, I think, iconic part of AFL. And it's something that really attracted me. And it's called the centre bounce. And this happens at the start of each quarter and after every goal. And it is very similar to an NBA <laughs> tip-off. Have it's the black guys jump, baby. Ruckman, who will then attempt to jostle position with each other while jumping for a ball in the air and attempt to tap it down to their rovers or a tap it to punch it ball forward and get it away from the congestion. And perhaps the most entertaining part for any foreigner is how we have our restarts in the game. You'll notice that when the ball goes out the sidelines, we have a, a throw in. And you'll see how the umpires throw it in. They get a lot, a lot of distance of that. And they create a mini version of the bounce between the two ruckmen. And it's really, for all intents and purposes, an umpire-led throw in. It's a real weird part of the game. And it's something that you amused me when I first started watching this. That's crazy. He, like, kicked it backwards. I guess that's kind of like a soccer throw-in, huh? But that's crazy, man. This sport is freaking awesome, bro. Let me know in the comments. When's the, the Super Bowl? Or not Super Bowl, I'm sorry. When's, like, the championship for this? Let me know. I'm trying to... I'm low-key trying to check it out, bro. I might even have a live stream and watch it with you guys. It's a great spot. Now, tackling is one of the best parts. It's a very physical style of game. 
And if you're familiar like I am in the north of England, rugby league tackling is one of the iconic parts of it. It's what we all enjoy doing as kids. Tackling is permitted, but it's got to be between the shoulders and above the knees. And you'll hear the crowd, if you mm. watch the game, scream ball. And what they're trying to do is request the holding the ball rule, mm. which means every time a player is tackled, they are given enough time to dispose of that ball. They must release the ball either via legal handball or a kick. And if they don't have the opportunity, it's called paying holding the ball. Ooh. Or you'll hear no prior, which means you're tackled before you have the opportunity to release it. We also have wonderful moments like bumps and shepherds off the ball. A shepherd is where a player, player effectively bumps or uses his shoulder to shoulder to protect another ball carrier from a tackle. <laughs> so and obviously crazy. the bumps you'll see quite often in a thing we have called taggers. Now taggers will remind you of players like... That's so crazy, bro. There's nothing like this in America, bro. You guys are freaking crazy, man. I mean, yeah, they're... Americans, there's some like rugby leagues and stuff, but I never seen an Australian football league. Like this is this is different. This is freaking sick. Like Patrick Vieira and Roy Keane enforcers, they stop the good players playing and they look to stifle the opposition with bumps off the ball and intimidation tactics. Now our wonderful AFL season over here has played over 22 fabulous games, with the top eight making up the finals. And if we look at it, the top eight can be one of the most confusing. 22 games in a season? Oh, the injury's got to be crazy, huh? How many players are on a team? And I guarantee you there's so many injuries throughout the season. Things in the world. But as you can see here with this graph, the top four go into what is called a qualifying final, where first and second place will be at home and fourth and third will be away in that contest. And the losers of them games will go into what's called a semi-final and they will be playing five, six, seven, and eight. Five and six play in an elimination final. It's a knockout style type event. And the winner of that gets to play the loser of these qualifying finals. And mm. then the winner of that goes on to whoever won the qualifying first and the qualifying second. Sounds quite confusing, but if you follow that graph, it should get you through. And then we're at the biggest dance of them all. 100,000 people in September at the MCG. <gasps> On a national day's holiday. So September, that's when it is. It's this month. Let me know what day it is. I'm trying to I'm keep trying to watch. You live here in Melbourne. 100,000 people. Day off to watch it. You grab yourself a barbecue, grab yourself a nice cool beer, and you sit down and you cheer on your team or whoever you've adopted that day <laughs> and cheer them onto glory. But it's not just two team glory that we have in the AFL. Whoever finishes top of the ladder wins what's called the minor premiership. And it's not really that important. No one really talks about it. It's kind of just, you've got the first qualifying final. Wow. We also have the Brownlow medal though, and that is a bit like our FIFA player of the year. And it's a very interesting way it's done. It's voted by the umpires on the ground that day. They give a three, two, one and vote for the top three players on the ground. And it's called the best and fairest. And if you get suspended throughout the year, you forfeit your right to win the ah. vote. It's a very tough competition to win. And only the cream rise to the top, top there. We have a Coleman medal for the leading goal kicker. And the leading goal kicker over here can range anywhere from 60 to 100 goals a year. <laughs> and we have a Rising Star Award that's given to the best player aged 20 or under on January the 1st that year. And must have played wow. 10 or less games at the start. 20 or younger. They got to be at a huge disadvantage compared to like, you know, obviously like the 25 to 30 year olds who are just physically just... Grown man strength, right? So, man, that's that's dope. Out of that calendar year. But for me, the greatest thing about this game of footy isn't the game itself. It isn't the marks. It isn't the spectacular, wonderful goals and virtuoso goals. But it's about the fans. It's about the cheer squad yep. who use their spare time to make wonderful banners for the players to... Go run through at the start of the game the noise they make the chance they make it's the rivalries that make up this game hold on i'm trying to see some of them afl cheerleaders let me know if you guys got some baddies out there and it's a friendly rivalry unlike the vicious rivalries we have in soccer in the uk it's banter and it's fun and it's not death at all costs it's retaining the equal passion for both sides and the love of the game and it's about how spiritual this game is how we remember our indigenous forefathers for allowing us mm. to play this great game on the allow 
the great rounds <laughs> that the land is represented on. It's the That's community dope. rounds we have, the indigenous round, the wonderful Guernseys, the wonderful dances we have at the start of the game. It's about bringing That's the whole sick. nation together. The whole I bet you the crowd goes crazy, bro. Do you guys do the haka, or is that more just like the rugby, like Pacific Islanders? But yeah, bro, that's sick. You, I bet you crowd goes nuts for the dances. The whole nation. Because it's like indigenous to your guys' culture, you know what I mean? Stops March to September to watch this great thing for me. But perhaps I'll save the best for the last. The iconic team song. The most iconic things in soccer are watching at Anfield singing You Never Walk Alone. It's a wonderful sight. But there's nothing so charismatic, I think, but seeing 22 blokes after they've won gather in the changing rooms to sing their famous song. And it is a wonderful thing to see. It's a wonderful spectacle and a wonderful sight. This is mm. the wonderful game of AFL footy, the greatest game in the world. Welcome to a sport that combines not only the ferociousness of rugby league, the silky skills of soccer, the theatre of wrestling, the pantomime of NFL, all done without pants mm. and a script. This is AFL, and this is sport at its purest. Man, let me know in the comments, bro. Who's your favorite team in the AFL? Let your boy find out. Hey, man, if you enjoyed this content, bro, please smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications if you haven't. And check out, if you want to support your boy's channel, check out the link in the bio. You guys could buy me a coffee if you'd like, man. It'd be much appreciated, man. Love you guys. Catch you guys on the next video, y'all. Peace.